Hello everyone, my name is Raj Zet. I'm a database engineer with Amazon Redshift. In this video, I'm going to talk about an important feature of Amazon Redshift called Automatic Workload Management or AutoWLM, along with recently released Query Priorities feature. We will briefly look at what are AutoWLM and Query Priorities, how to set up AutoWLM using the console. After that, we will run a demo workload, once with priority and once without. Then we would compare the report to see how AutoWLM managed the workload according to the priority rules. Finally, we will take a quick look at query monitoring rules and how to set those up in console. AutoWLM, along with the concurrency scaling feature of Redshift, enabled you to get fast, consistent query performance for thousands of concurrent users and queries. Using the AutoWLM feature, Redshift dynamically manages memory and concurrency to help you maximize query throughput. With the new query priorities capability added to the AutoWLM feature, users now do not even have to worry about memory allocation or concurrency. You can simply set the query priorities for different user groups using the console, and AutoWLM uses that priority rule set to allocate resources for the queries. AutoWLM breaks out of traditional FIFO or FIFO queuing model and prioritizes resources for relative higher priority queries. Now, let's go to the console and take a look how can you turn on AutoWLM and set up query priorities. You can simply choose Workload Management in the config menu for your cluster. Click on Create to create a new workload management. By default, it would create a configuration with AutoWLM on. You could override to make it manual. For this demo, I have already created one workload management configuration. Let's open that one. If you see, the default configuration has only one queue, automatic memory allocation, automatic concurrency level, and priority as normal. Now, we are going to create three different queues with three query groups, report, data science, and dashboards. I'm going to assign query priority normal for all of them and finally save it. So here goes. You can also create, modify, and delete AutoWLM queues and prioritization using the AWS CLI and API. All changes made to the WLM configurations are dynamic in nature and you do not have to restart the cluster for the change to take effect. Only thing we do is save the configuration. Now let me explain you a little bit about the test environment. For this demo, I'm going to use a small two node DC2 large cluster, a small data set about 100 GB and 20 plus queries. Based on the complexity, queries are broken into three categories, as I mentioned during queue creation, dashboard, report, and data science. I have a Jupyter Notebook to submit these 11 dashboard queries, 9 data science queries, and 2 report queries at a constant rate. We kept the result set cache off so that each query would get executed and not return earlier cached results. Queries will be submitted 4 at a time for each category. With this setup, let's run the queries for 30 minutes and then we will see the throughput. When you click the Start button, it would start the workload in the background and record the start time. We'll come back in 30 minutes and take a look at the throughput. This is about 30 minutes since we started the workload. Uh, let's take a look at the report. If you see, the dashboard queries are moving faster than data science or report queries. Now it's time to change the query priorities to demonstrate how AutoWLM uses the query priority rules against the workload. For that, we will go back to the Redshift console, open the WLM config that we are using, and change the query priority. For this test, we are going to make data science as high priority, dashboard queries to low, and keeping reports as normal. Please note, these are relative priorities and does not have any hard limits on the concurrency. Now I have saved the changes and let's record the time in Jupyter Notebook. We will come back again in 30 minutes to see the report.
We are back again after 30 minutes. Let's run the report and see. If you remember, we set up dashboard queries to be lower priority than a report and data science to be higher, keeping report as normal. As you see, Auto WLM successfully applied that set of priority rules. Data science queries are now having higher throughput than report and dashboard queries, and dashboard is having the lowest throughput. In real world, priorities will be driven by the business needs and can be changed anytime with changing business priorities. If required, you could use AWS CLI to bump up the ETL jobs as high priority during the bad jobs and revert that during daytime when business analysts would have the priority over bad jobs. Let's quickly take a look at some other ways you can set your rules and priorities for your queries in the Auto WLM configuration section. I would like to highlight one important feature that comes with QMR or query monitoring rules and query priorities. You can now promote or demote certain user group queries based on runtime metrics. For example, you could set up QMR rule to promote ETL jobs as higher priority if those jobs are running more than 30 minutes. Here is how to do that. We create a new custom QMR rule. We give it a name. Then we add a condition that if execution time is more than 15 minutes or 900 seconds, change the priority of that key of query to low. Then we save the configuration. So during runtime, if any query within that query groups runs longer than 15 minutes or 900 seconds, it will be demoted to a lower priority query. Uh, with that, we come to the end of this demo for Redshift Auto WLM with Query Priority Setup. Thank you for watching.